안녕하십니까? 대구 스마트치과의 이재욱입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. 이재욱 of Smart Dental Clinic. This is the first lecture on sinus surgery and I'm going to talk about what considerations we need to make before surgery. Before surgery, various factors need to be considered. Not all of them can be addressed. I'm going to point out some prominent areas where we need to check and look at clinical cases. Before surgery, we need to evaluate the sinus itself. This is most important. There are many factors to check within the sinus. Frequently, we can come across the sinusitis, an MRC or mucus retention cyst, mucosal thickening, polyp, antrolith, and such. These will be addressed. First, there's acute and chronic sinusitis. There are many factors. You may not be able to remember everything, but please remember factors such as facial pain, facial fullness, and nasal obstruction. In the case of facial pain, it can lead to headache. If it becomes more severe, it can lead to ear pain. There can be pain in the ear and there can also be fullness in the ear. In the case of acute sinusitis, it means that the inflammation is blocking the ostium. Disease progresses for several days to several weeks. As shown here, after sinus surgery, the patient has complained of fall order and headache. These were the prominent traits on panoramic image. You cannot really see it, and, and it's not crystal clear in water's view as well. When you're trying to diagnose sinusitis, it is better to take a CT. On the left, compared with the clear sinus, on the right side, because of inflammation, the sinus looks full. It's filled with inflammation. And you can also see the bone graft particles here and there. In this case, you need to provide medication first, and if symptoms do not improve despite of it, then you can consider various surgical treatment. In order to avoid such from happening, we need to make various precautions and you need to refer the patient to either ENT or tertiary hospital. In the case of chronic sinusitis, it takes months to several years for complete cure. The patients who suffer from chronic sinusitis for several years, they just live with it. It must be very difficult to do so. There is continued pain and headache, but the patient just lives with it, and the patient to themselves that can become very short-tempered. Why is chronic sinusitis important? because it can be an absolute contraindication for bone graft. If we cannot diagnose chronic sinusitis ahead, then even if we do surgery with bone graft, you will not be able to get optimum results. To give you an example, I would like to talk about my aunt. My aunt called me. I was working as a chief of dentistry at a small-sized hospital. Because of sinusitis, she visited the various departments, including ENT and internal medicine. 
But she experienced no improvement because she was not diagnosed as sinusitis. And in the end, she came to my hospital. She wanted me to make a reservation at neurology on her behalf, but that would not have solved her problem. Actually, I have uh, slight symptoms of sinusitis, and I am very well aware of the symptoms. I recommended her to visit ENT. She was diagnosed as rhinosinusitis, so her disease progressed from sinusitis to rhinosinusitis. She was given medication and surgery most recommended, and since then she has been living well. It may look common, but we can frequently overlook this. Please remember this. Another one that we can frequently come across is mucus retention cyst. In short, it is called as MRC. If you look at the image, unlike the left on the right side, there is a opaque something in dome shape. In most cases, it will be diagnosed as mucus retention cyst, and the size is quite large. If there's a mucus retention cyst, you can still proceed with surgery. However, if the size is significant, you can either reduce the size or take additional measures. In terms of reducing the size, we can approach it laterally and make a slight incision to remove the contents. If that is too stressful, you can use the 50cc syringe with a thick needle to do aspiration of the contents inside. If the size is small and if all measures that have been discussed come off as too much for you, then you can do sinus lift cautiously and proceed with surgery in the traditional way. It's the same with mucus retention cyst. On CT, you can make a diagnosis. Despite MRC, sinus lift was performed and good results were achieved. Next is mucosal thickening. It refers to when a mucous membrane is thickened by about one millimeter or over. On CT and on panoramic image, you can see the mucous membrane that has become thickened. And on CT, you can see that it's been swollen. In most cases, the mucosa thickens because of the inflammation of the tooth, and if the thickness is not too excessive, then it will not be a problem. The thickness itself is not a problem, but it can cause inflammation in surrounding teeth. Therefore, you need to manage those conditions. If the thickness of mucous membrane is going down, then you need to proceed with surgery. Based on my experience, when there's mucosal thickening, in my experience, it feels as if the sinus lift can be done more easily. Before surgery, you can see that mucosal thickening is here. Rather than just proceeding with a surgery, you may want to do extraction or do endodontic treatment in the problematic teeth before proceeding with surgery. Addressing inflammation before surgery would be more beneficial based on my experience. Once the thickness is reduced, then you can proceed with sinus surgery in a more easy manner. Next is polyp. I have not experienced polyp that much. This is a case from another dentist. You can see 
translucent lesion here and the dentist referred this patient because the dentist couldn't figure out what it was. You can see the existence of polyp through a CT rather than a panoramic image. In most cases, it is in the inner wall. You do not necessarily have to remove it through diagnosis, so you can just check that it is polyp and proceed with surgery. Next is antrolith. Like a calculus, it is calcified and radio opacity is observed. It's radio opaque mass. As shown on the left, the size can be quite significant in the case of this patient. Although we diagnose as antrolith, it's unrelated to implant surgery and you can just proceed with implant treatment. If number 26 and 27 are missing and if sinus graft is necessary, then the antrolith must be removed. You can check this on CT rather than panoramic image as well. It is right below the sinus. It is positioned towards the lateral wall, which we need to approach. If severe calcification is observed when you remove it, in most cases, it looks like bone. It's hard and irregular. Depending on the size, you need to determine whether you're going to remove it or work around it. Various considerations can be made. Next is fungal infection. This can be checked on CT rather than panoramic image. Its characteristics include the fact that it is accompanied with foul odor. The fungal infection itself can be opportunistic infection, therefore you need to check whether there are any immune issues. It's not frequent, but in the case of malignant tumor, you can see that surrounding structure are destroyed and quite aggressive patterns can be observed. This can be observed via CT more accurately compared with panoramic images. If you want to do sinus surgery and if you're willing to learn more, then you need to prepare CT and do radiograph analysis and do surgery planning. It's similar to MRC and it may look like a dome shape. You need to check whether it is periapical cyst of adjacent tooth or if number five is extracted, you need to check whether it is residual cyst. In the case of mucus retention cyst, then you can proceed to surgery as is, but in the case of periapical cyst or residual cyst, this can be an infection focus, so therefore you need to differentiate them. In the case of radicular cyst, you need to remove it or take the relevant actions before proceeding with surgery. Beyond diagnosis, I'm going to talk about surgery when there is sinusitis. In the past, Antrostomy type of surgery was proceeded. Let's see how antrostomy is processed. Sinusitis refers to a situation where there is blockage of osteum leading to inflammatory substance continuously filling in the space. Conversely, antrostomy is releasing of these substances. Traditionally, through the nose, 
With gravity, you have the inflammatory substances flow out like this, but this gets blocked frequently. Then it can lead to sinusitis again. The level of technique required in surgery is high, but prognosis is not assured. As of late, endoscopy is used to remove the inflammatory substances and through cleansing, we maintain the sinus healthy. Functional endoscopic surgery is preferred these days. After surgery, medication is provided and for two to three days, nasal packing is done and treatment is proceeded. When I asked my friend about this treatment, the effects are fairly good. Although I'm going to share my experience, I'm not saying that this is an absolute rule. This was a female patient in 80s. She experienced sinusitis symptoms and she visited a local dental clinic first. She was told that there was sinusitis on both sides she was told to do surgery at ENT. She went through all the surgery and she heard that she was safe to receive implant surgery and came to my hospital. On panoramic image, it looks a bit hazy and in some sense it looks okay. So I took a CT. On left side, it is slightly still swollen and on the right side, the entire thing is hazy. Based on the standards that I've discussed up until now, it is not a favorable situation for bone graft on both sides. You can see carious here and periapical lesion. It would be difficult to proceed with surgery or other kind of treatment without treating this. Even if the patient goes through sinusitis surgery, not everyone gets okay. Even if ENT treatment is over, you need to evaluate the sinus because you're going to perform the surgery and as a primary physician, you need to evaluate the sinus and come up with a treatment plan. Although I've provided various medication and treatment, the situation did not improve. In the lower, I placed the implant in a traditional way. And for the upper, PD type of restoration was provided using the three teeth as abutment. The purpose of today's lecture is not about doing sinus surgery. Today's purpose is to think about how to make sinus surgery more safe and the patient more healthy. You need to make appropriate diagnosis to be able to provide a good treatment I was not able to address everything because of time constraint. There's going to be more master course that is going to be conducted. Watching online is good, but if you come offline, we'd be able to do hands-on practice and look at the different aspects. Thank you for watching.